to turn across the table now to Sharon Gaffney, who joins us for a look uh, through today's newspapers. Uh, Sharon, you're starting with a bit of French politics. France's Green Party has chosen their candidate for next year's election. Yes, Alison, 54-year-old MEP Yannick Jadot has been given the green light, so to speak, to join what is an increasingly crowded field of candidates all in the running to hopefully steal Emmanuel Macron's crown. Um, they're calling him the Green Giant, or Le Géron Vert, at Liberation. That's a play on words, as he certainly didn't win the primary by a large margin. Taking 51% of party member ballots, Jadot beat his rival by just 2,000 votes. The other candidate, the self-described eco-feminist Sandrine Rousseau, is a figurehead of the Me Too movement here in France. The newspaper says that in picking Jadot over Rousseau, the Greens have chosen reason over passion. And it's a mature choice, according to L'Opinion, which says a win for Rousseau would have been a catastrophe for the Greens. The newspaper suggesting that her more extremist views wouldn't have appealed to French voters. In the cartoon there, the party is being called to unite behind their new candidate, who's described as male, white and heterosexual. Finally, on this story, the right-wing Le Figaro asks if Jadot will be able to convert the ecologists into realists. The newspaper says he's a pragmatic choice, but suggests he'll have some work to do to unite his divided party. All right, Sharon, you're going to take us to the U.S. next, where the press has been reacting to the latest Senate hearing on the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Pentagon is beginning a very American process of post-war accountability, so says an opinion piece in the Washington Post. Tuesday's hearing on the messy withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan marked a point of reckoning, according to the newspaper. The Post says the poignant encounter between Congress and the Pentagon was a signal that the military was owning its mistakes. This, it said, was a cause for hope. But less hopeful is the Wall Street Journal. It's focusing on one man who isn't owning it, and that's the U.S. president. In an editorial, the paper says Joe Biden's behaviour has been scandalous, not because he allegedly ignored military advice on Afghanistan, but because he's refused to accept that that's what he did. It says that while Biden wants all the political credit for ending the war, he's not willing to take the political risk of admitting that he overruled his own generals. And Sharon, meanwhile, in the UK, the fuel crisis remains the main story on pretty much all of the front pages. Almost right across the board. We have a rather sober warning from the Times. It's saying that the current disruption could last for up to a month. Um, its front page also has uh, some detail from Boris Johnson, who yesterday said that he was putting in plans to make sure that there would be enough truck drivers available to get through Christmas. Over at the Star, meanwhile, they think it's brawl over. The tabloid is describing the country as wild West Britain as frustrated drivers get into punch-ups and attempted knife attacks at petrol pumps. Now, this is a serious topic, but uh, we just got a sneak peek there. Uh, the papers are also having quite a bit of fun uh, with the story, putting in some international espionage. And there's lots of great cartoons in the British papers today. And they're tying in the latest offering in the 007 franchise. Another big story today. So No Time to Die, the long-awaited James Bond movie, had its premiere in London on Tuesday. And a clever play on the title from cartoonist Christian Adams, who says, No Time to Drive. You can see there a rather dejected-looking Boris Johnson. He won't be going very far, as it looks like he's run out of fuel on his way to the premiere and another Bond classic makes its way into this offering from Guy Venables. A cue to a fill which reminds us of another very famous Bond movie from the 1980s, A View to a Kill and we can see Daniel Craig there, he's in a long waiting line, has about a mile to go I think till he gets to the closest filling station. The famous Aston Martin is also featured in one last animation from the cartoon Blower. What's this cue, says Bond to his sidekick, who always has all the latest gadgets, if you, you know the Bond movies. Is it a stealth bomb, invisibility fluid or a secret jet ski? Much better than that, says Q. It's unleaded. Well, hopefully the release of that movie can at least distract people in the UK uh, from that fuel crisis. Uh, Sharon Gaffney, thank you very much for that look through the papers.